What about the submission process itself? It's very important that, again, you refer to our author guidelines. So the manuscript and figures need to be prepared according to the author guidelines. And again, you can find these on the home page. Don't forget the covering letter. And then the question arises, why is the covering letter so important? So let's talk about that in a little more detail. Do remember the editor will use the covering letter to help him or her decide whether or not to send your work out for review. So what you're going to do in your covering letter is you need to again put your work in context and again describe how your findings are novel and exciting. Also you can use the covering letter to suggest suitable referees or indeed request that your work is not sent to one or two individuals. If you do this, you need to provide justification. You need to provide justification why your work shouldn't be sent to these people. If you're suggesting the names of referees, and the journal would probably find this helpful, please do provide full contact details. And that obviously means their address, but also, their, most importantly, their email addresses. OK, next, we'll consider what happens to your manuscript after it's been submitted. So let's have a look at this flowchart here. As you can see, the manuscript submitted and in the central office of New Phytologist, an editor is assigned to look after that manuscript. The job of the editor at this point is to decide whether or not the manuscript should be sent out to review. At this stage, if he or she decides to send it out, he assigns three referees to the manuscript. Then, once the reports have come in from the referees, the editor is then able to make a decision based on the content of the referee's reports and also his or her own judgment. And as you can see here, there are three basic outcomes. The manuscript can either be accepted, it can be accepted subject to satisfactory revision, or it can be rejected. Let's follow through what happens after um, situation in which the manuscript is um, accepted subject to revision. Now, you will then be invited to submit the revision and then this will come back to the editor and at this point she or he will then be able to decide whether at this stage enough work has been done to satisfy the editor in which case it is accepted or it may be necessary in the case of um, more substantial reviews the editor will feel he or she should send it out again to the referees for further comment. This would be another round of refereeing. And at the end of that, the, the outcome we would imagine would normally be it's accepted. Let's now talk about these decisions in a little more detail. The first one we can talk about is the accept decision. So what do you have to do there? Well, very little apart from celebrate. And uh, obviously we hope this happens to you. Much more common in terms of decisions, actually, is the situation where your work is accepted subject to satisfactory revision. If this happens, what you will do is you will receive a message from the editor who's handling your paper, and it will contain the comments that have been made by the referees. You need to re read these very carefully indeed. You also Possibly even more importantly, you need to read the letter from the editor very carefully. Because in this letter, he or she will tell you what work you have to do. And it will be stipulated here exactly what you need to do. When you submit your revision, please provide a detailed covering letter in which you describe, on a point-by-point -point basis, how you have dealt with the comments raised by the editors and the referees. Please cross-reference this letter to the manuscript so as to highlight what changes you have made and where they are. And what I mean by that is, uh, for example, let's imagine that um, in response to a comment from the editor, the editor has asked you to perhaps provide some additional discussion. So in your um, response to the editor, uh, you will say that I have done this, and then uh, you would state what you've done but you would also say, and this material can now be found on page 3, line 29. And you could even highlight the text in the accompanying copy of your manuscript. What we're going to look now is the situation, um, which is the reject situation. Now, obviously, this is disappointing news. 
But there are ways of trying to take positive things from this. So do read the comments from the referees and the editor carefully, as they may help you to do more work in order that you can publish your results elsewhere. A question which then arises is, are appeals possible? The answer here is yes, but you've got to remember that they need to be fact-based. So, for example, this would be a situation in which um, a referee has misinterpreted your data. An opinion-based appeal, for example, my work is really important, is unlikely to succeed. If you do wish to appeal, it's necessary to construct an appeal letter. Please provide clear evidence that an error has occurred. This could include, for example, additional data or evidence from the literature that supports your appeal. Remember, don't be rude about the referees. Your appeal must be fact-based. When you submit your appeal letter, an editor will consider your appeal and will respond to you in due course. And finally, do remember when writing your manuscript or responding to comments from the referees, simply make it easy for the editor to say accept. And my final message is good luck and I wish you good fortune in submitting your research to New Phytologist and we look forward to seeing it in print.